delight to Soho. It's a pleasure to have you all here. I run the membership and events, and my name is Naomi. Hi, Naomi. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Joy. Um, so tonight is really special, and it's a really special event that happens monthly, and um, it's kind of all part of Lights of Soho's ongoing commitment to our creatives, because Lights of Soho is built for the creative community, for the Soho community to engage and create conversation and be a safe space that we can kind of talk about kind of what we're up to, where we're going, and hopefully provide contacts for one another to help boost where we're going. So we're just a lovely creative space. And the Bright Lights events are something that um, we put together along with Anna, who's actually here celebrating her birthday. It's on Monday. She's the VIP this evening. Um, so yeah, with Anna to, um, to put our creatives into the spotlight and give an opportunity for us to hear a little bit more about how they got to where they did their creative journey and then, um, yeah, a lot about kind of, yeah, how they got to where they are. So, um, I'm just introducing everyone today um, and first up I'm going to introduce you to Olivia. Woo! And um, on my, and I'm just doing this because I don't want it, right? On my right, Jessie. Yeah. Woo! Um, Olivia, actually why don't, rather than me kind of try and introduce you and fumble my way through, can you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about your journey and fashion in particular? Okay, um, yes, yeah, so I'm Olivia, obviously. I'm a freelance fashion journalist. Is that working? Is that, I don't know if Okay, hello, hello, hello. Um, yes, uh, so I'm a freelance fashion journalist. Um, I trained just as a normal journalist, <laughs> um, and it's really hard for me to pinpoint any particular point where fashion became the thing. It was just something that I was interested in, you know, while I was studying, and so then I started, you know, I started my own blog and I started writing for, you know, fashion magazines online, that kind of thing, and. Then I was really lucky to get my you know, first job straight out of uni and um, working with a startup company um, running their online fashion magazine. Um, and now I really can't imagine myself doing another interview. <laughs> and Jessie, do you want to just introduce a little bio, I suppose, about yourself? Um, I studied jewellery at university and went straight into a job in sort of uh, production and then worked my way into design. And then um, in October last year, I launched my own brand. Um, and then that's from there, it's kind of just picked up quite quickly. Um, and uh, at the beginning, I was kind of working for the, my original job, and this was kind of, you know, I build it up on the side, you know, do it slowly, but it, it now has become full time, so. And I don't know. Well done. And just out of interest, who in the audience works in fashion at the moment? Do you want to raise a hand? Just so it's just interesting to know kind of who would like to get into fashion and is kind of interested to hear what people are saying. Cool. Always interested. And who, <laughs> Always interested. <laughs> and who just kind of heard about this on the grapevine and thought, you know what, I want to come and support and see what you guys are up to. That too. Great, thanks. It's just interesting to know kind of who everyone is and kind of what you're here and listening to. Okay, so um, Olivia, fashion journalism. Um, has it? What kind of topics um, are your favourite? Are you kind of the on the Oscar red carpet? Who wore it best? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I'm really interested in the business side of fashion. Um, I currently work with a um, an online magazine called. Creative Artists Foundation, and uh, we look at the fashion industry in emerging markets. So, um, you know, I interview people mostly via Skype who are in um, Asia and uh, Middle East and South America and places like that, um, which are kind of really interesting because they're just starting out in their fashion industry, and those are things that really interest me. And a lot of um, a lot of the kind of side of things come into that as well. It's also what I'm really passionate about. Um, I'm also really interested in fashion history and. You know why, what we wear, what it says about our society, and where we are at a particular point in history. That's something that really interests me. Um, those opportunities to write about that don't come up as often as I'd like them to. So sometimes I do have to write about who wore the best thing on the red carpet. <laughs> um, and 
So you didn't originally aim to go into fashion, but you speak very, um, like, with a lot of expertise. You know, you know what you're talking about. And people want to hear your opinion. In fact, like the Instagram post I put up today was you being interviewed by like Al Jazeera TV or. Yeah, um, Abel Arabi on yeah. NBC4. <laughs> Amazing. So people want to hear your opinion, right? Um, and you're, you're followed and people like to hear what you say, but you didn't necessarily study that side of things. So what has made you kind of the expert? Uh, oh, gosh. I mean, no one really wants to call themselves an expert, do they? No. <laughs> um, but um, I don't know. I think, I think if you're a, a creative sort of person, then you can have... And appreciation of all things you know, I, you know, I love art, I love film, I love theatre, you know, I love music, I love all those things. But for me, fashion is the thing that I'm just like, I just get it. And I can't explain why that is, but it's, you know, something that I just, you know, I see it and I'm just like, I know what I'm talking about. And somehow in that process of, you know, constantly, you know, one of the things I love about being a journalist is you're always learning new things because you're interviewing interesting people and you're researching stories. Um, so somewhere along the way, you get to be the person that knows about those things. <laughs> Amazing. And I think you've got some questions for Jesse, and then we'll kind of come back around and I'll come back with some questions. Yeah, absolutely. This is this is just like the interview, and I'm more comfortable being. <laughs> So, uh, hey, Jesse, you are fresh from London Fashion Week. Yes. Um, that was just when was two weeks ago. Yeah. 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 And was that your first first time at um, yes. London Fashion Week? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, how was that experience? Yeah, it was crazy and quite tiring, but amazing. Um, it was good because obviously only like, launched in um, October and have only been online. Uh, it's the first time that. I kind of got to interact with people with my jewellery and I got to see the pieces in the flesh and um, I got to see people's reactions firsthand rather than, you know, on Instagram or whatever. Um, so it was really nice to have that kind of one-on-one -on -one feedback as well. And um, people that, you know, important people saying, yes, that's good, that's good, it's nice. <laughs> um, was there any feedback that surprised you? Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, all of it was quite surprising. Just, it's just nice to hear nice things about the You know, I like my jewelry, but there's no way of knowing if everyone else is going to like the jewelry. So it's nice to hear that kind of thing. So not that you know, it would be surprising, but it was just you know an extra kind of boost to hear that kind of thing. And. Um, And obviously, you know, we're here sort of talking generally under the fashion umbrella, but jewellery can be quite different to fashion. It can be quite a different um, industry, but I feel like jewellery is more and more being encompassed by the fashion world. And, you know, I feel like, you know, maybe even a few years ago, there weren't that many jewellery designers showing at London Fashion Week. They would go show at, you know, Goldsmiths and, you know, um, something like that. Was it a very conscious decision on your part to market your jewellery as fashion jewellery rather than fine jewellery, or...? Um, no. <laughs> um, so, obviously okay, I launched it, I've worked in fine jewellery, and I was so much in, I've not had much to do with the fashion world um, until now. Um, and I launched in October, and then just before Christmas had an email from Fashion Week inviting me to come along. So I, d I didn't apply because I didn't sort of think I was ready, and I uh, wasn't sure, you know, if they care. But because, you know, obviously was invited, I was like, I can't say no to this. So then that kind of just threw me in at the deep end, and there I was in the middle of the fashion and stuff. But I mean, I was quite surprised. It's the jewellery section of Fashion Week in the design showrooms is really big. There's really a lot of things there, and, and fine jewellery as well. Um, so it's definitely, I think, people are understanding now and kind of bringing it under the wing of fashion and stuff as well. Yeah. <coughs> um, let's talk a bit about your design. What I really, um, really like about your pieces is that um, 
you know, they, they obviously look absolutely beautiful, which is modeling some of the, uh, the jewelry this evening. <laughs> um, but there are really clever ideas behind them. Um, I really, I think the constellations collection is my favourite. Oh, um, so funny. Although, yeah, it's really coming up behind me as I speak. Um, so, yeah, so, so this range is, um, you can probably describe it better than me, but, um, you know, using the uh, signs of the zodiac. Um, taking their constellations and turning them into rings and necklaces, um, you know, rather than the, you know, what you see really to be is the, you know, the symbols of, you know, the zodiac and that kind of thing. Um, how on earth do you turn a constellation into a ring? <laughs> um, I've always said this. Whenever I'm inspired by something, I think in diamonds. I don't know how. But whenever I'm like, how do you like that? So that's kind of what it happened. Um, and yeah, like you said, a lot of the time zodiac things can be a little bit, a bit almost cheesy. Or um, there are certain signs that I mean, I'm a Capricorn, and I don't really want to wear a piece of jewelry with a round of a fish tail on it. It's not as pretty as a constellation. So um, there's that side of things. And also, I'm just always thinking about. Um, I want my jewellery to be really special pieces to people, you know, all of the pieces that I wear have, are a memory or something important to me or uh, really symbolic in some way. So I try to design with that in mind rather than just thinking specifically. Um, I kind of start with it being, you know, a special piece. And, you know, even though everyone's got a star sign, they feel like it, you know, you do kind of feel like it's your, your thing. You know, everyone's like, People bond over it, and it just—it feels very personal, even though. Uh, yeah. yeah. There's a lovely quote in your lookbook. I actually wrote it down because I thought it was so lovely. And it says, um, "Isn't it completely fascinating that something that is millions of light years away?" How did you come across Chris Bracey, and how did that inspire you? Um, I can't remember how it came about. I think it was my sister um, wanted to visit God's Own Junkyard, so um, I went to Albany with her, uh, and we were just. Oh, in there because it's amazing and it's been huge guy. Um, and I mean, she is interested in buying one for her house, and, and um, it kind of this is obviously before I launched the brand. Um, yeah, her birth name was coming up, so I designed her uh, a necklace in the shape of one of the it's actually this one, um, and that's kind of where it started and then it was like actually I can go further with this and just carried on just did more and more and they're just a fun they are just fun pieces but fine jewellery doesn't have to be serious and you know it can be fun because <laughs> I read as well that you know the entire idea to launch your own jewellery line came out designing your own wedding ring is that right? Um, but yeah it's um, I guess kind of was the start of the bigger things. Um, yeah, I started to sort of design my own wedding ring, um, and then uh, the design for it I put on the wedding cake. And then when I launched my brand, I needed a logo, and that was the logo. Uh, so that's kind of where it kind of yeah spiraled from from there, and just uh, yeah, it was the start of things to, of my own designs and in my way of realising that I could do it myself rather than, you know, someone else, so, yeah. And what's been the biggest challenge in launching your own brand? Um, money, <laughs> definitely, um, especially with fine jewellery, obviously, it costs, it costs a lot because it costs a lot to make, so even just having designs to put out there to show people, you know, you've got to put the money in. Um, and also just starting from complete scratch with being completely unknown, um, you, you have to say, where do I want to go with this, who do I want to be, how do I want to market this, like, you literally have got to start from scratch. But in saying that, it's a good way to start because you can, you can design your whole entire brand and your business exactly how you want it to be. But um, I would definitely say money. <laughs> that was the biggest one. Can I just ask, on the money side, did you end up kind of looking for investment? Um, 
no, I didn't want to go down, I really hate owing people money. Yes. Um, so I didn't want to go down that route. So hence why I kind of wanted to sort of start it slowly, you know, put bit by bit aside for it and um, just with my own money started. And then obviously as you start selling pieces, it, it builds up and then it's, it gets a little easier to design new ranges and stuff like that. But um, yeah, to start with, I, I wanted to make sure it was, I didn't owe anyone anything yeah. because I feel like that's an extra stress that you don't need to have. But having said that, you know, if someone does put a big injection of money into your company, then you get it back. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, but me personally, I don't like I mean, <laughs> Um And obviously you've launched your own website and you're primarily selling your pieces through that. Um, that's obviously a big opportunity for designers nowadays, you know, that wasn't, wasn't always there, that you can sell stuff directly, um, you can build your own audience through social media, but at the same time, that's also another thing that designers who are primarily designers then have to teach themselves and work on and build. Do you feel that's more it's more of a help or a hindrance? Um, I mean it's quite helpful to know everything that's going on in your business and not have to kind of outsource so much. So I, I, I've taught myself quite a bit but also obviously working for another brand, a small brand, I've kind of gathered you know, there's a small group of people, so you learn what other people do in their jobs and stuff. So, um, just any information that you can get from anyone, just absorb, absorb. Um, but I wouldn't say it was a uh, hindrance. I quite enjoyed it that side of things. Um, but obviously, yeah, sometimes it is a bit like, oh, I could do with someone who knows something about websites here. Um, but I've been really lucky, and I do know quite a lot of friends and, and friends and friends that know these things, so um, I've been out of the place. Out of interest, um, Olivia, did you start off with a publication or like in a like in a company or did you just go, I want to do that, I'm going freelance? No, I started off, um, yeah, working with websites and then I worked with a few publications after that. Um, the plan was not originally to go freelance, <laughs> yeah. um, but I actually ended up working inside a fashion brand for a while, um, but I knew that I always wanted to come back to writing, I knew that's what I always wanted to do, so I started freelancing on the side of a full-time job, and then when I built up enough clients, I kind of made the jump and went freelance. And do you think that, so for both of you, you think maybe working within some, like a format first and kind of learning the ropes before you go off by yourself is going to... Is ben was beneficial to your journey to kind of lead yourself. Yeah, absolutely. I think it gives you um, it gives you contacts and it gives you experience. Um, I think in many ways, because I've always worked in you know, quite small independent publications or um, you know inside companies that weren't primarily um, you know magazines. So sometimes I was the only person just working with a load of contributing writers. Um, so actually I did have to teach myself a lot, you know, early on in my career, um, which I had, had, you know, it was like being thrown in at the deep end, but you learn so much quicker and you get more experience that way, I think. Um, I also wanted to ask you, Jessie, um, about um, the technologies you use uh, with your jewellery. Um, I know you said you've got quite, um, you know, so a lot of your inspirations come from and um, you know, antique furniture and sort of art deco and this kind of vintage inspirations, um, but then you work with sort of new technologies yeah. to create really, you know, um, modern pieces. Tell us a bit more about the balance of that and what you're using. Um, so I always love antiques and going to antique flea markets and anything vintage. Um, but my style of design is a bit more modern. Um, and also a lot of the things that I am inspired by are not necessarily kind of um, nature, they're all kind of man-made things, they did obviously like the lines and stuff. Um, so I think, um, um, yeah the technology, um, so uh, obviously CAD is quite a huge thing um, now anyway, um, but I didn't 
teach that to myself. I didn't learn that in, in university. Um, so I've got a friend that learned that and I kind of outsourced that. Um, whereas I kind of learned more traditional techniques and traditional ways of, of making things. And um, so it's kind of nice to fuse them together. But sometimes, yeah, I do like vintage pieces. But um, a lot of the kind of vintage jewelry that you buy is um, kind of, because it's old, um, it can't be treated the same way as new jewellery when you were making it, you have to be very careful. Whereas if you, I'm designing things in kind of almost a vintage style, something like my number rings, um, they can be precise and pristine, but of a style of kind of vintage about, yes, the vintage look. Um, and also, um, you've got a few celebrity fans. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, your piece has been worn by Kylie and by Melanie Chisholm, mm -hmm. known as Sporty Spice to most of us. Um, how did those, um, how did they pop up? Um, kind of almost accidentally. Um, a friend of mine is, she works with Melanie, um, and she showed her and decided I gifted her one because she said that she would wear it all the time. She doesn't wear a lot of jewellery, so I was like, oh, I'll. That, that would be good because I was, you know, this was right at the beginning when I very first launched her, it would be amazing. And um, she was such a sweet one, she wore it all the time, it was brilliant. And um, off the back of that, a makeup artist sort of spotted it. So Kylie would have that, so you should Kylie. And uh, from there, Kylie's bought, she's, bought, she's got two now, um, and Melanie bought one for Emma Bunton. And yeah, it's kind of just somehow. It just word of mouth with them really. It's pretty yeah. good that they they paid for them as well. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah that, was, that, that, was a, that was a shocker as well to me. Um, yeah, just if you've got the contacts and you, you everyone knows someone who's a friend of a friend or something like that, it's six degrees of separation. Yeah, exactly. And you use your contacts sometimes, haven't you? And how has that boosted your brand? You think that's had a you know roll on effect? Um, I think it's good for just the trust kind of with your clients and with, you know, obviously as a new brand, um, going onto a website that's completely new to you, just seeing the face of a celebrity or something like that, kind of puts a little bit of, of trust, like, look, oh, this can't be, you know, a scam or, you know, anything like that, they, they must be, you know, legit and, and good quality and whatever. Um, so just, just for that kind of side of things, it's been really, really good just to have that as a, as a an extra kind of booster, mm -hmm. yeah. And what do you find is the most rewarding thing about having your own brand? Um, I think it's just the feedback that you get from people that own your pieces, um, and when they become a special piece for, for them, and they wear it all the time, and it's just nice to know that I, you know, I did that, I, I designed that, and they love it, so it's just, that feeling is really nice. More than anything, it's just that you know people. People want. It's not just oh, another another ring or whatever. It's it becomes part of their like, every day, or or as bought as a present for someone, and it's you know like that. I think is special. Yeah. And how do you obviously you know, the fashion market is really overcrowded? How do you make yourself stand out? Um. I think maybe just because all of my, um, I try to keep all my designs kind of uh, with a, a personalised kind of feel to them. Um, obviously the, the star sign constellations, um, you can relate to them, I think. Uh, you know, well, just being able to relate to a design or personalise something, I think is something that people really kind of latch on to. And it's um, time. Yeah, it's, and you know, it becomes something that people want it because it will mean something to them rather than, um, oh, I want that pretty and it might not be pretty, you know, <laughs> down the line or whatever. Um, yeah, so I've got, um, I've got um, some rings that are like three rows of diamonds. Some of them are set upside down so that in brow you can hide a secret message, but they just look like sort of stacking rings. So. It's a secret, you know, that I think that kind of thing is like something that 
people kind of relate to and really like the touch. I think that's really popular right now as well. There's a lot of a lot of the big brands are trying to do personalization in various ways, but it's quite hard for a big brand to do that. Whereas that's you know maybe an advantage of being a smaller brand is that you can personalize. I like as well that it's not you know in your face. It's not tacky as you say. It's like you know these yeah braille diamonds. That's an amazing idea. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so, do you have any new ideas at the moment for your, the next collection you're going to make? Um, there's a few things in the pipeline. Um, uh, yeah, there's a few, there's a few, few things going through. Um, so, would you um, would you consider going to, um, or is it a matter of them coming to you, like Asos? Um, like going to, um, like talking to Selfridges and how it's about stocking, is that the next step for the brand in terms of, I suppose if you're in the designer showrooms, the idea is you have buyers come by so they put them in stores, they go to national. Mm -hmm. Is that the next step or are you happy keeping it where you are with the website? I mean, yeah, I would like it to, to go to that next step, um, just to have like another platform rather than just obviously my own. Um, I met, like, I met so many amazing people at, at Fashion Week, so obviously just kind of in talks with people now, and we'll see where it goes with that one. And also just talking to me with all the press and stuff at, at Fashion Week is really, really good for the next kind of stage of things. Just to, for a new brand, I mean, I'm still, you know, it's the fourth month of being wow. uh, a brand, so everything is still. I don't know if I'm, you know, qualified to talk about all this stuff to people, but. Um, uh, yeah, that hopefully is the next the next step for me. Fingers crossed. Amazing. <laughs> and how long was the development period before you launched it? Um, I think probably uh, the summer of last year was when I kind of sat down and said, right, let's start making some pieces. Um, and then, yeah, so I, I launched the website in October. So, you know, just a matter of months, really, just to yeah. kind of make a few pieces. Quick. <laughs> uh, yeah. But, I mean, it's been in my mind for a little while, but yeah, I'd say this um, And it's all made in London as well, yes. isn't it? Is that something that's important to you? Yeah, I think so. Um, it's nice to be, you know, British designer, made in London, uh, and the quality, I, I can keep an eye on how things are made, and keep an eye on the quality, and be involved in the development of pieces from the start, whereas sometimes if you get things made abroad, you know, there's, there's that kind of gap between design and coming back and samples and da da da. Um, so I, can, I, I just I want to be involved in all of the aspects of everything to do with the brand. So um, keeping an eye on it till, yeah. Where in that, because I know an awful lot about where clothes are made and where it's good to get certain things from certain parts of the world. Where it's good to get jewellery made? I don't actually know that. Um, um, I mean, well, we've got obviously Hatton Garden in London is like the jewellery kind of hub, and there's also Birmingham has got a huge um, jewellery quarter. Um, there are lots of places. I think it's quite similar to clothes as well. You know, there are lots of places that you can get um, jewellery made as well, but I. I've never really looked into it because I'm, I, yeah, I've always, I've always wanted to be, yeah, London, born and bred. And <laughs> Great. Um, and what is the dream for your brand? Where do you want it to go? Um, I would like it to go. I like to be one of the, you know the big names in jewellery. I'd like to get get up there if I can. Um, but yeah, just carry. I, don't, I just I, I want to keep it. You know. Still, you know, very personal, and um, I don't want to kind of saturate it too much with filler. I wanted to make sure that it's, you know, my designs. I'm always kind of involved, and um, but yeah, I, I'm. I mean, I'm still right at the beginning, so. The sky's the limit. Yeah, I did. The I didn't. stars <laughs> the limit. Reach for the stars. I didn't expect to kind of get this far so quickly, so oh, I'm already kind of ahead of myself. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Um, unless you have any more questions. No, let's open to the floor. Yeah, if anybody else has any questions they would like to ask, feel free. Yeah.
jump in? Yeah, I think we have questions. So oh. It's just interesting <laughs> to know, guys, your opinion. Just um, what kind of skills should be basic for a modern designer, like fashion designer, jewelry designer? <laughs> If anyone didn't hear that, it's what skills are the yeah, absolute basic essentials for yeah. a modern designer. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, I think um, as long as you're creative, um, everyone's got their own style. I don't think that it's something that you can kind of pinpoint um, that you need to, you know, to design as if you don't necessarily need to be good at drawing or anything like that obviously it helps but um there's so many different ways to do things now like with the kind of modern technology <coughs> and stuff that actually you can kind of pave your own way um and youtube to tutorials yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wake up one day i want to be a fashion designer <laughs> probably look online as like a <laughs> yeah, yeah. sewing machine how to take it to market who to talk to <laughs> Watch our pillow videos. Watch the videos from previous live items. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Find out that entire arts creative how to get there. <laughs> yeah, probably so it's important to, to have anything. kind of creativity, you know, just like creativity. Oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, like, it's important to have a creativity, yes, just to design, like, new pieces or... I, I, I think so. Um, just to create, you know, use a bit of creativity in there. Um, I mean, it's fun. To be able to think in design um, and you know, concepts and, you know, I would say, to, to design. And I don't think you're probably don't think you'd probably want to decide something if you weren't in essence creative. Yeah, yeah. I don't think you'd probably come to that yeah. because it probably wouldn't be something creative that you'd think up. Yeah. So I think it's kind of a part of the past of it. Yeah. Um, and then I went on to university to study um, jewellery and silversmithing and goldsmithing. Um, so I kind of detoured a little bit, but uh, when I was younger, I was always, you know, fixated on jewellery and anything that was sparkly. And um, I've always been quite a creative person, so I knew I'd end up kind of going into something that had uh, a creative process, and then an end result, you know, a physical piece, which I found photography. Um, I enjoyed the creative kind of side of it and then, you know, conceptualising and coming up with uh, the shoot. Um, but with jewellery, you've got, you know, something actually physically to, to work with afterwards, and I think that's kind of where I kind of swung myself back to, um, to jewellery, yeah. And then, Livia, did you always want to be a journalist? Yes, since I was twelve. <laughs> really? What was it before twelve? Was there a was there a thing? Um, I think I wanted to be a teacher, but now I can't think of anything I'd like to do that. <laughs> <laughs> and there was a question over oh, here. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, how do you go about your promotional side? Do you have like do you sit down and think about strategies or anything, or do you just go out there? And, like, um, I mean, I've, I've had to kind of start to think kind of that way, you know, in seasons and, you know, after this advert, how, oh, this time it's going to get the summer and it's going to do this. Um, but up until now, it's, it's been kind of just finding my style. Um, and I mean, most of it's been Instagram and, and things like that. I've not actually overly um, advertised anywhere yet. Um, so up until now, I'm kind of trying to kind of get my signature look and and things like that. But yeah, now I'm kind of getting into the working out seasons and oh, you know, I go to this one, and hit those people, and yeah. people start thinking about people getting married at this time and <laughs> stuff like that. But yeah, up until now, it's just been kind of finding a, a signature look to to advertise. And and how do you deal with? Um, yeah, trends and, and seasons in your actual designs because obviously jewellery 
is much less, you know, people don't look to buy a, you know, a necessarily yeah. new piece of fine jewellery every six months or whatever it is. So how do you deal with that? Yeah, I guess it's different to fashion in that it's not seasonal so much because, you know, it's not, it's, it's, not, it's not a jumper, yeah, for your a covering. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, so it's kind of more, I guess, um, trend based. Um, but at the same time, obviously, my my kind of stuff is a bit more. I'm I'm, I'm designing my ranges, kind of thinking that I'm going to keep them on there as my kind of like staple ones. You know, I haven't kind of thought about kind of when I would ever take them off uh, from, of sale. So um, I guess I just think, yeah, I'm just thinking in design, I'm thinking diamonds. <laughs> yes? Sorry, do you like your final design or you always want to change something after you? you um, yeah, there's always things to add. I always kind of, yes, I love it. And then you're thinking of the next thing always, or what can I have to this? And, you know, already the, the, the um, obviously because I'm still new, I'm kind of my collections are quite small when I launch them, and then I can add to them. Like when I first launched the constellations, it was just rings, um, and now I've added the necklaces. And you get feedback from people as well when they see your designs and stuff. They say, "Oh, that would I really like that in a, a, a bracelet or whatever," and then that starts to kind of cogs tick in, and then that's kind of yeah. You just keep adding to it, and um, I don't think I think creative people are never quite like. I think if you ever sort of go, "Yep, yeah, I'm done. I'm happy with that," then you kind of you've lost your creativity a little bit because you know you should never stop. You should always be thinking, "What's better? What's what? How can I improve this?" Because that's just how you keep going. But do you like to listen to people, I mean, what they say about your jewellery, or you mostly like feel annoying when they say like, oh, I would like to change this or this? No, it's good, it's good to hear what people, because, you know, people are the people that buy <laughs> your jewellery, so it's, you kind of can't go, no, I'm not listening, because then you wouldn't really get it, would you? But um, always, always good to hear from, um, from people and always good to take advice um, from whoever it is, always. Um, because people think in different ways and sometimes someone will come up with something or say something about my designs that I hadn't thought of before um, and you start thinking, oh yeah, actually, that's a good point. And, you know, but some of my designs sometimes have started a certain route and then by the time we actually come to make it, it looks completely different to how it started and sometimes it looks exactly how it was going to in the beginning. It's just people's opinions are, are quite important, I think. But then you have to put your foot down sometimes. <laughs> so to say, what inspires you? Because obviously um, you're four months in, and um, so you've obviously got all these ideas going on in your head, and you're thinking, okay, maybe this season I'm going to have this collection. I'm going to design this. Next season I can design that. But when those, when you've made those ideas, and those ideas start dying down, how do you then kind of inspire yourself again to bring out something new? Um, I think. There's always kind of a, a backlog um, of designs kind of like queuing up. Um, so as I get one out, there's another one, and then I'll keep adding to it. Because um, I mean, you, you never stop being inspired, and things always come. And you know, sometimes something will pop up, and it will overtake everything that I thought that I was going to do next. And I'm going right, put this in there now. Um, so I think just I, I don't. You're you're inspired by whatever you're whatever. Sometimes you don't realise that you're inspired by something until it hits you. Um, but I would say mostly um, it is kind of, I said man-made things, but I suppose the constellations are not man-made, but the, the idea of star signs and, you know, the, the constellations are, you know, the story, the man-made and um, stuff like that, rather than um, fashion and architecture and things like that. So it always tends to be things that people have done rather than, you know, plans. <laughs> um, so, in that sense, you know, I could, it, it's literally everyday life can inspire a collection from nowhere. <coughs> what advice would you give to aspiring young fashion designers, both of you, really? Different, different question each for both of you in different fields. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
I would say, um, I mean, me personally, I I learned a lot from watching for someone else. Um, you learn, you know, what to do, what not to do, um, and also just a bit of experience in that industry before you try and step into it, just not knowing anything about it. If I tried to do this, you know, five years ago straight out of uni, I wouldn't have known half of it at all, and I don't think I would have been able to feel my way as well. Whereas because I've learned from so many people that I've worked with or met along the way, I can apply that to my own work now. Um, so I say I would just I would say that that would have, that helped me. Um, <laughs> I don't know, I meet a lot of I meet a lot of young designers who have yeah just launched their collections and um, for me it sounds really simple but being able to talk about it, like it's great that you're here, you know, talking about designs because a lot of people, especially creative people, you know, they're quite precious about their work and they, you know, they maybe come across a little bit embarrassed. I'm sure they're not actually embarrassed, but you know, as a journalist you know, obviously I don't turn around to them and go, okay, sell it to me, go! Um, <laughs> but that's, you know, that's essentially what I'm doing when I, I talk to them. I'm like, you know, tell me about your collection. Tell me what makes you different. That's what I, you know, I'm looking for a news angle. Like, the news angle is not necessarily, you know, there's a new jewellery brand. There's new jewellery brands launching every week. Um, I want to know, yeah, the amazing stories of, you know, like these constellations. I think they're beautiful. I think that, you know, the Braille diamonds, that's something really unique that I've never seen before. You tell me that, I'm like, that's a story, you know, so I think my advice as a journalist to young designers is learn how to talk about your brand. <laughs> yeah, and um, I'll leave that question for you. Just, um, do you need kind of inspiration just to write, you know, or it's like a technical process, you know, these articles and all this stuff? Um, yeah, I think... I think journalism is an interesting one because I think it really bridges the kind of creative and the um, intellectual side. Um, for me, I find just meeting people and talking to people and interviewing people, hearing their stories, that inspires me. You know, when I when I have a really good interview with someone, I walk away and I'm walking down the street and I'm already planning out what I'm writing in my head. Like I've got the first sentence. Um, other times, I walk away and go. <laughs> um, and I have no idea what to write um, and those are times you often have to force yourself to write something rather than do nothing usually because you're on deadline um, but yeah there's definitely um, yeah there's definitely some inspiration you need to write um, but yeah I think my sources are quite different to you know artists or designers or whatever it's hearing stories that's what inspires me yeah Amazing. Well, thank you everybody for coming along for the panel part of the evening. Um, next up, we're actually uh, going to quickly set up and in the next 10 minutes, Fabien, one of our um, Lights of Soho ambassadors here, is, and also in the fashion world, yeah, yeah, um, is going to be playing some tunes for us in the basement. So feel free to stick around and hang out with us, have some drinks, have a chat network, do the stuff that kind of Bright Lights is about. Um, and thank you so much for coming down to Lights of Soho. Um, if you want any more information, all the team are pretty versed. Jalone on the front. It's a wonderful chat. <laughs> and he would love to talk to you this evening. So um, yeah, stick around with us, hang out. Um, on the 22nd of, um, on the 22nd of, this month we're doing um, a, like an arts talk and it's kind of a bit more vocational and it's about kickstarting your career in the arts. So please do come along if you're up for that. And then our next Bright Lights event is on the 13th of April and that is about photography and we've got some amazing uh, like established Julian Marshall who's amazing and a founding member of Lights of Soho. Um, along with Laura Allard Fisher and some other kind of pioneering young photographers working in fashion and music and across the board. So they're going to be with us on the 13th of April. So thank you very much for joining us and thank you so much to our speaker.